Yeah, so you guys kind of got to see what I'm looking for out there on the lake, where I'm looking for it at. So now I'm going to show you guys the lures. You know, I tried to I tried to narrow it down to my top five. Um, really couldn't get it down to top five. Uh, the fishing stuff out there in January on Toho, especially with the offshore grass situation out there right now, um, it's really really fluid. You know, it's changing a lot. But I've got on the deck of the boat right now kind of my top picks all together, including a wild card that I'll show you guys. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So first and foremost, number one lure choice out there on Toho, uh, December all the way until, you know, getting into February, March. Um, especially if we if you get cold fronts and that water temp stays in the low 60s and the 50s, got to be the hard jerk bait. Hard jerk bait is probably the number one producing lure on Toho uh, this time of year. Um, a lot of people like to throw the mega bass stuff. Me personally, I'm a little more partial to the Jackal re-range. Um, I throw a standard 110. Uh, the colors that I throw can vary. Um, I've got a wide range of colors that I throw in that Jackal re-range. Um, not going to get into all the names, but basically if I've got a really bluebird sky sunny day, I'm going to throw something a little bit more transparent, a little bit easier on their eyes. Um, I really like that hollow RT minnow, um, kind of some duller colors um, or transparent stuff. If I've got a little bit of a cloudy day or if I've got a lot of wind on the water, I'll actually go to a more solid color like this one right here. This is kind of a, a black back, kind of a chrome shad kind of deal. Uh, it shows up in that water really well. But jerkbait, probably going to be my number one choice for January. It's hard to go wrong with a jerkbait. You can really rip it through that grass, you know, and, and when you finally clear that grass or you get on the other side of it, you know, you can let it sit there and suspend and catch a lot of nice fish that'll come out of that grass and eat that suspended jerkbait. Um, the gear that I throw jerkbait on can vary pretty greatly depending on the situation I'm throwing a jerkbait in, water depth, all that kind of stuff. On Toho right now, I'm throwing my jerkbait on a Dobbin Sierra Micro, and it's the 703. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that Dobbin Sierra 703, it's, it's not an overly long rod, but it's got enough backbone to rip that jerkbait through the grass. Um, some of my softer jerkbait rods, they tend to flex a little too much when I'm trying to get that jerkbait in and out of that grass. So I go a little bit stouter rod out there. I'm also throwing a, a heavier line. I'm throwing 12 pound. Typically I would recommend throwing 10. If I'm chasing schooling fish and I'm fishing deeper, trying to get that jerk bait down farther into the water column after some uh, schooling fish that I'm live scoping or maybe individual fish that I'm trying to catch on live scope, I'll actually back back down to a little bit lighter of a rod and lighter pound test line, go down to 10. Um, that's usually my jerkbait setup. Like I said, Toho's got so much hydro in it right now, and those fish are relating so heavily to that hydro, especially the really thick stuff. I'm actually throwing a stouter rod, that Sierra 703. It's not a glass rod. Um, it's just a standard 703 Dobbin Sierra, and throwing 12 pound line on that. All right, so number two lure choice on Toho in January for me right now is gonna be the lipless crankbait. Lipless crankbait's been producing fish on Toho in the winter time, fall, probably actually year round for ages, long time, um, never seems to stop working. And it's a great reaction style bait because you can really rip it through grass. Everybody knows that. Um, I don't have a particular brand of lipless crankbait that I throw. This one happens to be made by Arc. Um, it's pretty good trap. Um, I like it a lot. I like the Yozuris. I've thrown a lot of them that all work pretty good. Um, pretty much as long as it'll rip through the grass, it'll probably get bit. As far as colors go, I really like somewhat of a transparent lipless crankbait on Toho right now. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That's not a solid color. It's got a gold to a black back on it, but the belly of it's transparent. Um, mostly because of the amount of fish I've caught on this trap over the last couple weeks, that back hook's been out. Um, caught a big one on that a couple days ago. But, and I don't like a super over noisy 
trap. Typically, I like the one knocker style stuff. Um, this one's got just the conventional BBs in it, but that trap's done really well. But yeah, the lipless crankbait, ripping it in and out of grass, gonna be my number two choice on Toho, especially in that water's cold, because you can get a reaction bite out of those fish. Um, I throw a lipless crankbait on a Champion 735 glass rod. Um, I like the glass rod for lipless crankbaits. It tends to not pull the hooks out of their mouth as bad. Um, and this one's got enough backbone that you don't have a problem snapping the, the trap out of that grass out there. So, all right, lure number three for Toho. And for me, this could go to number two or three. Just kind of picked up the, the lipless crankbait first, but half ounce chatterbait. Um, I throw the jackhammer. I've tried a lot of them. I don't care what anybody says, day in, day out. The jackhammer is, is the best chatterbait around Hydrilla. It rips free cleanly. Um, it comes through grass really well. It has the best hardware on it to handle big fish and heavy cover. It's, it's the best period. Um, as far as colors on that go, I usually bounce back and forth between, and I don't know the color of this, but it's like a shad pattern, but it has a gold blade on it. This time of year, when that water gets really, really clear on Toho, I like a gold blade over a silver blade. Um, I feel like there's a few more bigger fish that eat gold shiners than there are shad. I feel like some of the bigger fish in the lake don't spend most of their day chasing shad necessarily. So I like gold stuff. Um, but either just a shad pattern with some gold on it or the golden shiner one, you know, it's all good stuff. And then as far as a chatterbait trailer, Hog Farmer makes that pintail shad. I think it's called a pintail shad by Hog Farmer. It's any of these, these pintail baits are, in my opinion, they're the best chatterbait trailers out there. I catch a lot of nice fish on these trailers like this. And again, that's kind of a, a gold shiner color. And as far as a rod goes for what I actually throw the uh, jackhammer on, um, Dobbins has a line of rods called the Caden series. And I really like the 743 for that. That 743 is really nice. It's got a lot of backbone and being a three power, it's got a lot of give. I throw that on straight braid. <clears throat> um, I'm throwing that on the CPF Lures 9X braid. And all my casting rods, I'm throwing that in the 20 pound test. Turn that up so you see it. But I throw that CPF Lures 9X 20 pound test on all my casting rods and I throw the chatterbait and the lipless crankbait on a leader. I usually put about four or five feet of 16 to maybe 20 pound test fluorocarbon leader on there. Um, I don't like to go any lighter than that because I still like to have that ability to rip that bait out of the grass. But yeah, chatterbait and the lipless, two or three, one or the other, don't know. Um, I like them both probably equally the same. Chatterbait's pretty good, especially around all that grass. So my number four bait of choice for Toho in January, again, it's a toss up. Couldn't really pick between one or the other, but I'm gonna go swim jig, swim bait with a belly, belly weighted flashy swimmer hook. I really like these, they come through the grass really good. And uh, especially later in the day when the water temp gets up into the 60s, and the fish get a little bit more apt to chase down food. Um, I like to go to a little bit bigger profile on, on a weedless bait, because like I said, all day, I'm right now I'm fishing hydrilla, period. Um, my swim jig of choice is gonna be a half ounce Bakewell Custom Jig swim jig, and I'm pairing that up with a CPF Lures wobbler on the back of that. Um, I don't remember right off hand the, the name of that color, but it's like a green pumpkin pearl and it's got some red glitter in it. And that's my favorite this time of year for shad patterns. I really, uh, when the water gets as clear as it is on Toho, I really like that red glitter. Don't know why, but they seem to, they seem to like it enough to get bit. Um, Throwing, throwing my swim jig, half ounce Bakewell custom swim jig on 
a Caden, but this is a 744. It's that 74 Caden blank, but it's a little bit stiffer. Um, it's just like that chatterbait rod I'm throwing, but it's a little bit heavier rod. It's got a little bit more backbone. You know, you get a big girl comes up in the grass and eats that swim jig. Want a little bit more backbone to get her out of there. And my swim jig, I'm throwing on just straight braid. I don't put a leader on there. Again, that's going to be that CPF Lures 9X, the black no fade braid. That's 20 pound test. Now, I know some of y'all probably think I'm crazy for throwing 20 pound test in Hydrilla, but I can tell you I've not had any problems yet. And I absolutely don't let up on fish whatsoever. I, I, I'm pretty hard on them. Um, and then probably my, my tie for number four I could grab either one is going to be a swim bait with a flashy swimmer hook on it. I really like that, especially on cloudier days, um, really sunny days with that water being as clear as it is out there. You don't pick up as many bites, but this is definitely a, uh, later in the day, this is a big fish getter right here. This guy will pick up some big bites for me. I'm throwing that on a, uh, Dobbins champion rod. A uh, 763. It's my favorite rod to throw that little swim bait on. That's a five inch swim bait and a 3 8 ounce owner flashy swimmer hook. Throwing that again, 20 pound CPF Lures 9X braid. But I throw that on a really slow reel. This is actually an old Revo S, really old Revo S, but it's got a 6 4 to 1 gear ratio that I really like. Um, really keeps that swim bait really kicking slow. Pick up a lot of big bites on that guy. Um, yeah, so bait choice number four, gonna be a toss up between the, the half ounce Bakewell custom swim jig or the swim bait with a flashy swimmer hook. Really all depends on the day and the wind and stuff like that. All right, so we're getting into the last one. And then it's going to be the wild card. All right, so last bait choice for me. It's uh, going to be between two. Uh, both of them are going to be Texas Rig Soft Plastic Worms. Um, probably my favorite is that guy right there. Going to be the CPF Lures Stickler. That's the five and a half inch. It's basically a Cinco. Texas Rigged with a quarter ounce Hogtack Tungsten on it. You know, if I get on a, a patch of shell or a hard bottom, or if I see some fish in between some patches of hydrilla and they're related to the bottom, but I can't get them to come up and eat my jerk bait, or I can't get them to follow a swim bait, I can't get them to come after anything, I can usually clean them up with either that CPF lure stickler, and that color is Dirty Albright. It's one of my favorites whenever that water gets real clear out there. Or I'll throw this one at them, and this is going to be the CPF Lures Thumper Pro Junior. And that's in Junebug. Their Junebug is phenomenal. It's actually got a lot of blue. And I really like that in that clear water out there. That's a much smaller profile. And that guy, I mean, these are my cleanups. These guys will come behind a jerk bait or one of these other big baits that I've showed you guys. And uh, it'll clean up some pesky fish. And of course, everybody knows, you know, on Toho, a Texas rig soft plastic worm, probably the number one fish producing bait out there. You know, you can't really, can't really go wrong with either one of those. Like I said, it's gonna be the Thumper Pro Junior in Junebug. Got a pack of them right here. It's probably my favorite. And then, uh, pack these guys right here. Yep, that five and a half inch Stickler Pro in Dirty Albright. Those are great worms out there this time of year. Um, not real hard to use. <laughs> Don't need live scope for those guys. You can pretty much just find a bed of grass and, and start winging that worm around. Last but not least, and we didn't really get to talk about it yesterday because like I said, I ran out of time, had to go pick my customers up, but I was actually going to ride around and take some cool pictures of some mats shoreline mats but always this time of year if everything else fails for you 
or let's say you don't have the electronics on your boat to fish offshore, you can always run around Lake Toho on the shoreline and find some heavy mats and start dropping a creature bait and a big weight into a mat. And if you do that enough, you will find some nice fish at some point. My go-to, gonna be that P&P &P Reaper, Dirty Albright, one ounce hog tech tungsten. That, that bait right there has caught me so many fish over the last six months, it's, it's unreal. Um, definitely my favorite, favorite punching bait right now. It's my favorite flipping bait right now. Like I said, I got that on a one ounce hog tech tungsten. Um, not gonna go into too many details about weight, stuff like that. I usually, you know, long the long end or the short end of it is I usually try to go the lightest weight that I can get through the mat possible. I don't flip a two ounce, I don't flip an ounce and three quarter, I don't flip an ounce and a half, I don't flip none of that stuff. One ounce, I can get through just about anything out there. A little bit slower fall, pick up a few more fish. And of course, pretty much all of y'all have seen this rod. This is the rod that I was using when I won the, uh, the Harris Chain event. It's my favorite flipping stick of all time. Um, the day that rod finally gives out on me, I'll probably cry and might have a uh, might have a funeral service for that rod in the backyard. I don't know, but that's it, guys. That's the braid I throw. But, uh, this one was pretty cool. Hope it helps you guys out, and uh, maybe I'll see you guys out there on the water.